This is a Chippy Education Program brought to you by Beringer Crawford Museum. This content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. It may not be used for profit. Ice Age Animals, those found in the Northern Kentucky region. The woolly mammoth was one of the earliest of the Ice Age animals. Everything was still covered in snow and ice. There was just a little bit of ground peeking through, and you would have some grass and maybe some little flowers. And think about when winter ends and spring really hasn't gotten here yet. The first plants that grow are the grass and the flowers. Well, that's the food that the woolly mammoths ate. Now, these woolly mammoths were pretty big. They weighed as much as three SUVs stacked on top of each other. But it was so cold, they had three layers of fur. That's like wearing three fur coats. Now, they were just a little bit bigger than today's elephants, but not too much. But their tusks were a lot longer and much thicker and were very curved at the end. Now, because these animals ate just grass and flowers, their teeth were very flat and just had low grooves, almost like a tire, or if you look at the bottom of your shoes, that's what their teeth would look like, and about that size, too. And guess what? Even though these woolly mammoths were very much like our elephants, they lived right here in the northern Kentucky area. Isn't that pretty cool? As the climate started to get warmer, the woolly mammoths were starting to get overly hot, but they couldn't take off any of their fur coats. Well, a cousin of theirs started to appear, the mastodon. The mastodon overlapped its time with the woolly mammoth, but then he started becoming more prevalent and around everywhere. The mastodon weighed as much as one or two SUVs, so he's a little bit smaller than the woolly mammoth. He had less fur, so he didn't get as hot. Now, because it's getting warmer, the grasses and the flowers are not the only plants around. We're starting to get shrubs, bushes, and some small trees. Well, the mastodon also ate branches and bark. Wouldn't that be good for lunch? Well, because of that, his teeth had to be different. He wouldn't be able to eat that kind of food if he had the same teeth as the woolly mammoth. So if you look above this picture of the mastodon here, you'll see he had teeth almost like people's molars. They had deep grooves in them, and that way he could chew up this much harder wood. His tusks were longer and straighter than the woolly mammoths, and he too lived right here in this area. Here is a picture of what the mammoth the mastodon and the African elephant would look like if they were standing right next to each other. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of difference in their sizes. Although the horses we have in the United States today were brought here from the Spaniards in the late 1400s and early 1500s, there were horses during the Ice Age. These horses, though, did completely die out and become extinct. They were very similar to our horses today. They grazed, ate grasses and leaves. They were usually about the size of a large dog or maybe a very small horse in today's standards. One thing that was really different, however, was their teeth. Their teeth were about three to four inches long. There's one in the bottom of this slide. The ancient bison looked a lot like the bison of today, but they were much, much bigger. These bison weighed as much as a truck, about 5,000 pounds, and they were a little bit longer than a car, about 15 feet long. They were the most common of the big animals in North America for about 10,000 years. Now, they had longer, thicker fur than the bison today because it was much colder then. They ate leaves and grasses. 
Now, because it was much colder and during the winter there was a lot of snow on the ground, they would use their big heads to push the snow out of the way so that they could get to the grass. Pretty smart, huh? Here's a picture of their teeth. As you can see, each of their teeth were not quite a half an inch wide. So they were still pretty big teeth. I'm not sure the tooth fairy would be able to carry one of those very easily. What do you think? The giant ground sloth was another of these very large herbivores. Remember, a herbivore is an animal that eats plants. The favorite food of the giant ground sloth was leaves and grasses. In fact, he had these really curved claws that he could use to pull branches closer to him so he could get his favorite tender leaves. The giant ground sloth was up to 20 feet tall. That's as tall as a man standing on top of a bus. These sloth weighed up to four tons each. That's as much as two cars. They walked on the sides of their back feet because their claws were so curved they couldn't even put them flat on the ground. In the upper right hand corner there is a picture of a tooth that is from a giant ground sloth. It's a pretty big tooth, wouldn't you say? The saber-toothed cat is also sometimes called a saber-toothed tiger. They had a shorter tail than today's big cats. This lets us believe that they would ambush, hide, and jump out at their prey. Their canine teeth, those two in the front that are really long, could grow to be eight inches. They used these long teeth to stab their prey, but they were kind of fragile, so they didn't really bite with them. These cats were really powerful jumpers. They hunted mammoths, mastodons, the ancient bison, ground sloths, and other animals. Animals that were a lot bigger than they were. These cats did not actually live in Kentucky, but every once in a while one of their skeletons are found here. That's because these animals actually traveled through Kentucky when they were following their prey. I hope you had fun learning about some of the Ice Age animals that roamed northern Kentucky thousands of years ago. And once the coronavirus closures have ended, get the full experience of this program by scheduling an outreach or field trip to BCM with your group. All you have to do is ask for Kentucky on Ice. You will be able to handle and hold specimens of Ice Age animals from our collection. Isn't that cool? You can visit us at bcmuseum.org.